That's it. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I pray that all is well this evening. I thank God for this opportunity to come once again. Uh, just running a little late, trying to get uh, organized here at the uh, church. Now, I, and now forgive me because I want to make sure that I turn my do not disturb off properly. It won't want nobody to call because we're just trying to get set up, work late today and just trying to get set up and go back into our study that we had started on. Uh, we've been talking about false doctrine and we've been talking about uh, uh, how to distinguish uh, sound doctrine and uh, and 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 the, the it said how to distinguish genuine Christianity from false doctrine. And we were able to get in our first session, we were all we were able to get to our second page. Once again, I say good evening, I good evening. If you don't have this this sheet that we've been working with, you can go to our website, uh, which will be put up for you uh, before this session is over. Uh, you can go to our website and you can pull this up, or you can uh, uh, go, just come to us on our Facebook page. Uh, you can you can get all that you need uh, in this uh, particular study that we've been doing about true Christianity, how to distinguish it and false doctrine. And as we go into this, just kind of a, a rerun or a refreshing part, we said in our first part that we, that we will go through and read Romans chapter one through five, and we studied it in that first. Uh, segment and it went from showing us sinful man all the sin that man is capable of capable capable of even showing us the law how the law was to show us sin it was to make us understand that man was sinful and it, it wasn't to take away the sin but it was to show us sin and then we went on into the justification uh, uh, by faith in Christ. We realized that Christ justified us. Then we went on in and we talked about Adam. I mean, we talked about uh, Abraham and, and how that, that God counted it unto him as righteousness because he believed. And then we come all the way into chapter 5. And when we come into chapter 5, we want to look just at chapter 5. Good evening, guys. Good evening. I pray that all is well. I pray that all is well. But uh, and I, like I say, our paperwork you can go onto our uh, our website and pull this out. But we studied this and we began to study it and we began to look into it. And reason why I, I want to say reason why Holy Spirit led us in this direction is because of so much error that is being taught and, and not just starting to be taught. It's been taught. From, from way back 2,000 years ago. I mean, it's always been false teaching coming in because even as Jesus would bring stuff out to show that, hey, this is not the will of the Father. This is what you're doing. You're making my Father's house a, 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 a house of, of thieves. And this should be a house of prayer. Even Jesus recognized the error in the falsehood that was even then. And then Paul continuously warned uh, the different churches that, that, that God allowed him to plant through the power of the Holy Ghost. He continuously warned them, be, uh, be, be aware uh, 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 be aware of these false teachers. And this is something that we've got to continuously teach. Now, this is not somebody coming from the outside coming in. This most time will be right there in leadership. Whenever we change the, the change the emphasis off of Christ and begin to place the emphasis upon us, then you can get ready to get into some falsehood. We got to continuously know that the that the word of God is about the gospel. It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's about salvation. And guess what's all involved in that? Yes, the sanctification process, the justification process. But we got to realize and understand that a man comes before Christ as sinners, as ungodly. And the righteousness is in Christ. The, 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 the believer 
is justified through what Christ did upon Calvary's cross. And, and the sanctification process in the born again believer is from now to the day God come back to get you. Amen. So we got to understand that when we begin to put emphasis on physical things, emphasis on material things, the Bible tells us to set our affection on things that are above and not upon the things that are upon earth. When we begin to set more of our affection on the things upon this earth, then we begin to get into that falsehood because now you're going just to get against what scripture preaches. Now, I, won't, I don't want to use this out of context, but I want to remind us of what Jesus told the rich young ruler. He told him to sell everything. He came to him and told him that he had to buy it. He had to buy it by all the rules and he done everything. I'm paraphrasing. He done everything and then there was the pride up in that. He done everything from a little boy. He did. He did. Jesus told him, okay, that was good. But do this one thing for me. Sell all your riches and give it to the poor. He said he walked away with his head down. Why? One thing was pride. He was prideful because he said, I did all this. See, he said, I did all this. See, this is preached in the pulpits. You are able to do this. You are able to be this. This can be the best day of your life. This can be the best. But if you take Christ completely out of it, when Christ said that we will suffer, that we will go through stuff because for his name's sake. So not saying that you're not blessed because we are blessed. We are blessed. Yes, we are, but we got to understand that we got to continuously keep the word about God, about his work, about who he is. We got to glorify him. He said that he created the creature to worship the creator, but he said that man want to worship the creature more than the creator. <laughs> so we got to understand when Paul was saying this in Romans, that he was laying it out right then, that they had the foreknowledge of who God is. They seen the wonders. They seen the miracles. They knew who God was because things that they seen was unexplainable. But he said they wanted to change the truth of God into a lie because they wanted to make it about themselves. Remember the Tower of Babel. When they say, well, let's, let's make us a, 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 a I'm going to say the ladder all the way up to, the, to, to, the, to heaven, more or less. And then God came down and confused them because they was wanting to do something that they shouldn't have been doing anyway. They should have been praising God for who he is. They should have been thanking God for right where they was. But see, we, this, this is why we want to make sure we understand that false teaching hadn't just started. It's been around. Amen. But if we truly want to give God the praise and honor and glory, we got to continuously look at the scripture and recognize who is to be praised, who is to be honored, who is to be glorified. Amen. And I know I'm going against the grain with most folk because they didn't turn it around and just like the false teachers and make it about ourselves. And then we take Jesus completely out of it. Don't nobody want to hear about Jesus on the cross no more. Don't nobody want to hear about him dying for sin no more. Don't nobody want to hear that he justified us no more. They don't want, I, I'm, 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 I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. And then just take God. <laughs> I guess if we great, then what that made God greater. So, so let it, so when we're studying this, it's the emphasis that we put it back on Christ and recognize we play, we do what we're supposed to do and we're where we're supposed to be as believers. Believing that, that God is sovereign, believing that he's almighty, believing that he's everlasting to everlasting, believing that Christ, uh, the uh, uh, blood was shed for the sins of the world, for those that will come and believe upon him as savior and trust him for salvation. Amen. So I know that was a lot, but but still, I I thank God this evening again to be able to come before you guys and that we can study His Word. And my prayer is that we will continuously grow and recognize that we want to put all the emphasis upon Christ, and we want to and, and if we want to walk in the blessings that He has bestowed for us, we want to recognize that it's about Him. His will be done. God's will be done. Amen? Amen. And when we look at our scripture tonight, I want us to look at something that, that, that in this last chapter, what we were supposed to be studying in this first half of our, our, our study. Chapter 5. And 
You might not, we, you know, we might not think it's a big deal, but I don't hear it. A, I don't hear it a lot. Uh, being saved, I really don't hear many people put a lot of emphasis on being saved, and some don't even talk about being saved. It's like it's it's nothing to it. But we got to understand the way that the that 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 the that the body is continuously added to is that people receive Christ for salvation. That means they get saved. That means if we're not preaching the gospel message, then can't nobody get saved without the gospel message. It's like a process. It, it, okay, you go get your driver's license. You can't pass a driving license test until you drive the vehicle correctly, right? You can't be saved without going through the necessary procedure to be saved. You got to come through Christ first. And you got to come before him as a sinner. So when I leave Christ out of my preaching and teaching, then it might be somebody out here that hasn't been saved, but Christ is the what? Christ is the way. He is the way that we be saved. He is the, the only way that man can be saved is that he come and believe upon Christ for salvation. Like, like I always say, man bring all the sin and God has all the grace because he is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe it. Amen. And that's what Paul said in, the, in Romans 1, that he was ready to preach the gospel. He was ready to preach the gospel because he know that that's the power of God unto salvation. When you preach Christ Jesus, you're preaching the word of God and then souls will be saved. Those that are or that have already been born again, the message to us is that open your mouth and share Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah, the gospel, the good news. That's the good news. That's the good news that Christ has already paid for our sin, that, that, that he has taken away sins of the world if we will come and believe upon him and trust him for salvation. He said, what must I do? What must we do? He said, only believe. Yeah, only believe. So when we look at Romans 5, you're going to want to, you're going to, we're going to ask ourselves something and then we're going to go and answer it in the same time. This is teaching. This is teaching. And so, Father God, we come before you right now with thanksgiving and heart. Thank you for another opportunity, Lord God, to, to hear uh, your word and to learn of your word and father god we pray through the power of the holy ghost that 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 souls will be stirred up tonight that minds will be stirred up that that somebody will be reached through the preaching of the gospel and be saved and not only that lord god that those that are saved and regenerate now that you will stir up in us oh god give us the heart to hear your word lord god even uh, uh cut Cut a slumber, Lord God, that which is in us that is not like you, Father God. Take the pride away, Lord God, that we may hear your word honestly and sincerely, Lord God, and that we'll put all the focus upon you and upon what Christ did upon Calvary, Lord God, that we may be ready, Lord God, to tell somebody what's our hope and whose our hope is, is in. And we recognize that it is in Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Father God, for all things. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. Romans Five. Good evening again, everybody. I see everybody coming in. Romans 5. And we look at the very first verse. And I might just be there for the duration of this study. Well, why you say that, Pastor? Because it's a lot right here in this very first uh, uh, passage of Scripture. And we need to know what we're saved from. You know, we, we, you know, we say that we say, I'm saved. A lot of people say, I'm saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost. Then you ask them what they saved from, then they'll say, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> they really don't know because they will talk that you got saved. You saved. Now, where, what am I saved from? I've heard, I've actually heard this, that all them people always talking about they say, what they, what they talking about they say is right here in the word. It, our walk as a believer starts with being saved. That's right. It starts with being saved from sin. It starts with being saved from the righteousness, the righteous wrath of God. That's right. And the scripture plainly tells us that. Oh man, it, it plainly it plainly tells us that Christ died 
for the ungodly, that Christ died for sin. And if he died for it, then when we believe upon him, that means we are saved from the wrath to come. Amen. Because he said he is coming back. And he will come back with judgment. So I don't understand when people say, well, I don't know. People are always talking about they saved. Well, we really need to know what we're saved from. Because if I'm saved, I need to know what I'm saved from. How did I, I, I recognize how I'm saved. Uh, some people recognize how they're saved. We got to recognize that we're saved by grace through faith in what Christ did up on Calvary's cross. Amen. It was nothing that we brought to the table but the sin. And when we brought the sin before the cross, then God saved us through the blood of Jesus. And we got to recognize that we didn't come to him. Oh, oh I'm so good, so God saved me. Well, if I'm already good, why do I need to be saved? It's been preached years and years. Well, you got to do good and you're going to be, you can't do good in your flesh. And this is, this is, this is, this is what keeps a lot of people from accepting Christ as their Savior because they say, man, I can't do good. I can't get it right. I can't, they call me can't get right. We know we can't get it right. And when you're honest and when you really understand that there's no getting right in the flesh, then you're able to say, I put it all up on Jesus. And then and, and he wants us to put it all up on him. He don't want you to take no credit for nothing because when you do, you're taken away from the cross of Christ. And when you take away from the cross of Christ, you're making his work of none. In fact, can't, you can't be saved. That's right. It's about Jesus. It's about God's love for the sinner. Amen. He hates sin, but he loved the sinner. And he gave his only begotten son to save the sinner. There's nobody walking this earth that can't be saved if they come to Christ and trust them for salvation. Amen. That's the only way. He said, I'm the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man can come to God but through Christ Jesus. So when we understand, when we understand the 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 what? Yeah, when we understand how it's done, and then we go to chapter Romans chapter 5, and we realize, okay, come on, here we go. We go to Romans 5, and we look at true doctrine versus false doctrine. And we look at it like this, and it says, Romans chapter 5, because we're supposed to read 1 through 5, I pray that if you had a week off last week because I was busy and I didn't get it a chance to come back in. So I hope you read one through five and you asked Holy Spirit to really feed you with what was there in those first five chapters because we're going to leave out of chapter five of this book and we're going to go to Ephesians. But listen to this because it's a lot to be said in this. Now, now let's get something understood, guys. And I, I really want us to do this. Don't ever think when we're teaching and preaching that we're trying to make a vendetta against somebody else. We just want to preach the truth. That's right. We really want us, now the revelation is already here. We want to be illuminated. In other words, I want that light to come on in my spirit, man. Bing! Oh man, that's what that's saying? All these years I was thinking they made me thought, uh, they've been making, uh, they've been fooling me. Now, why? Because I'm born again, now I'm able to read the scripture through the power of the Holy Ghost, and I'm able to understand for myself through the Holy Ghost. Not just somebody telling me this is what they say. Now, I'm being, I'm being fed from the Most High God through the power of the Holy Ghost to say, ha ha, that's what that means. And this is what we got to get as believers. Don't just, don't just have something trapped in your mind. Go and search the scriptures for yourself. Often time now, often times, watch your commentaries. When your commentaries begin to make it about man again, you need to really push that one to the side and get the one that's talking about the righteousness of God. Okay? To God be the glory. Amen. Now, if you want to be inspired, then leave it about inspiration. But when you want to be fed through the Holy Ghost, keep it about God. Amen. Okay? <laughs> 
If you want to be inspired and you want to, ah, oh, yeah, then watch the people that come on TV early in the morning and send them $30, $40 for their dreams. But when you really want to be fed through the power of the Holy Ghost, you ask God to, to illuminate your spirit eyes so you can see what, uh, the, what Christ is saying to the church right now. And then you'll be able to understand it. Precept upon precept, scripture upon scripture, allow Holy Spirit to speak to your, uh, 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 to your spirit through the word. And don't just believe everything I say. Go and search the scripture. I'm searching the scripture constantly and I'm finding new stuff all the time that I've been told totally something different. But now I'm seeing it for myself. And this is what we all should do as believers. If you want to be a good golfer, you're going to go out there and practice golf all the time. If you're going to be a good driver, you're going to practice safe driving. If you're going to be whatever you're practicing, if you want to be good at it, you, you got to practice, study, or whatever. So if you want to understand what your what what your faith is truly about, you got to stay in the Word. And a lot of time we have a lot of error in past teaching. I found a lot of error in past teaching, and I see a lot of error in present teaching. This is why Holy Ghost placed it on my heart to allow us to recognize what is true and what is false. Amen. And if it don't line up with the Word, then it's false. And if we take it out of context to make it make it feel good for us, then it's false. Okay? So, we came out of four talking about how Abraham was, uh, believed God and he said he counted it unto him as righteous. He said he counted it to him as righteous. He didn't say he made him righteous. He said he accounted it to him as righteous because he believed God. He believed God. And then we go on through to chapter 5 and then we look at this it said therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ what do we have peace from now let's not get this peace right here confused with the peace that surpasses all understanding okay Let's not get this. Let's not get this mixed up with the peace that surpasses all understanding. Now we have peace with God. That meaning that we're at peace. Like when we we we're warring, we it with like if we were in Iraq, and now we're not warring right now. That means we're at peace right now. So right now, since we've been justified by faith through what Christ did, guess what? God, we we get, we're at peace with God. Well, come on. Well, I got scripture to show what I'm talking about. When we say we're at peace with God, go back to Romans 1 and 27. This is where this is what Paul is saying. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. As the believer, as one that has came and accepted Christ as Savior and, and believed and been born again, we have peace with God right now. His, his wrath is not against us anymore. Let's let's go. I got a couple of different places I'm gonna go. Because the I, I want to let's see where I'm no for let's 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 go to one and eighteen first. As the believer, let's go to one and eighteen. This is talking about the guilty world. This is talking about the guilty world. This is talking about one that haven't accepted Christ. As savior, and then you and people always want to talk about y'all talking about y'all say what you saved from. If you believe the word of God, and if you trust in, in Christ for salvation, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. As believers, that's what we stand upon. I don't fight nobody upon what they believe. Is that what you believe is what you believe? But as Christians and as born again believers, we believe that. God is coming back. He's come, Christ coming back for his church. Okay? And he's coming back, and then you got the 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 the, the, the wrath is against sin. Okay? But as you're born again, he said you've been justified. Then he said you are at peace with God. Hear what he said in, in Romans 1 and 18. It said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. We have peace 
from the wrath. That's right. Why? And that hold me to stop. Yeah, to stop. You see? So now we see it now that we've justified and he said we have peace with God. The peace that we we don't have to worry about the wrath of God when you're saved. And this now this is why I'm saying when I say we're saved, we don't have to worry about the wrath of God. Okay, I want to take you somewhere else right quick. Go with me through to uh Second Thessalonians. We have peace with God. Well, why we have peace with God? Well, come on, I'm going to show you again. Go to 2 Thessalonians. If you don't go to it with me, go back and, and look at this later. How do we have peace with God? Okay, we're justified. So you're saying we have peace with God? Well, what you mean? Peace from what? Peace from what? Come on. As a believer now, this is to the believer only. Now, if somebody want to be saved and accept Christ right now and become a believer, we can do that right now, and then you can have peace with God. Amen. 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 But it, this is only to the believer. This is the wrath of God is not against the believer. You say, sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise, but we need to understand that what the wrath is as a believer. So if we able, if we witness it to somebody and somebody, I just don't believe, then you ought to be able to go to the scripture and show them that the wrath of God is against sin. It's against sin. And he's coming back. And, and the wrath of God now. This is the wrath of God. I ain't talking about no wrath of no man. I ain't talking about, I'm talking about to God. Almighty. Everlasting. All powerful. And then when somebody say they don't believe God. Then, but they, they walking. It ain't because of you that you standing and walking. It's because of him that we live, move and have our very existence. And then we well, all this stuff you have in the world. Because we live in a fallen world. We live in a sinful, falling world. That's why you see everything happen around you. Because we live in a sinful, fallen world. But God has given us a way out. He gave his son Christ to die for our sins. That way, the wrath is not up against the believer. Come on, come on I, I need to get there. I'm, I'm talking now. Let me get where I'm supposed to be. What did I say? Second Thessalonians? 2 Thessalonians, here it is. Pay attention because when we say we save and we say we have peace, this is what the peace is. Okay, 2 Thessalonians 1 around uh, 4 and 8. Let's say, let's go, let's go to 1 and 8. Let's go to seven. And he said, in, in this, and he said, and to you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention. What he said, obey what? The gospel of our Lord Jesus. That's the gospel again. You can't get around the gospel when you don't obey the gospel. Okay, here it is. Uh, it said, in flaming fire, taking vengeance. You know, when you take vengeance, that means you're coming against something, right? This is that we talking about this wrath now. And then it said, on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the power, I mean, and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. In other words, this is what he's talking about. About that wrath coming up against those who don't believe, who haven't trusted the gospel for salvation. This is that righteous wrath that we're talking about. Okay, this is what we're saved from as believers. If you don't believe the gospel, then that wrath is coming up against you because that would make you ungodly and unbelieving. Okay? This is the scripture. So now this tells us that we have peace 
We have that peace. We have that peace with God. We're at peace with God because of what Christ did upon Calvary. We have peace with God because of what Christ did upon Calvary. We have peace with God because of what Christ did upon Calvary, justifying us through what he did upon Calvary, redeeming us from that wrath to come. He redeemed us. He bought us back. Then he paid the price. He gave his life to bring us back. He reconciled us back to God. So now the wrath is not against us anymore. So now we are at peace with God. I, I want us to understand that somebody say, well, this is not talking about the peace that surpasses all understanding. This is the peace that the wrath is not against us because we trust Christ for salvation. Okay? Come on. Let, let us go. Let us go. All right? Go to Ephesians 2 and 5. I go through the word because I want you to be able to see the word. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians. And it's good that you go through the word. So you will be able to go back and see what you're saved from. How do you have peace? Because I, I mean, because if you don't know, then you need to know. Talking about that wrath. Pay attention. Pay attention. <clears throat> Believer. Okay? I'm going to go start at the beginning. Ch chapter 2 in Ephesians. It says it like this. Believer. These are, these are believers. Born again believers. So you understand and know why we have peace with God. Okay? You understand why we have peace with God. How did we accomplish it? It wasn't because of us. It was because of Christ. Is what he did upon Calvary to give us to have peace with God. Because he said, you are justified and we have peace with God but through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So here it is. It says it like this in, in, in Ephesians 2. If you're there yet, I hope you're there. Just, it, just. it said, and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Now we've seen that the wrath of God was against ungodliness and the ungodly, right? So now it said, and you had he quickened. He made us alive, okay? That means he, if he quickened us, he made us alive. That, okay? And then it said, who were dead and trespasses and sin. So we know that the wrath of God is against sin. We know that the wrath of God is against trespass. Okay. Wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of, the, of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The, and then it said, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay? Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of, our, of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, pay attention, Pay attention. What are we saved for and why we have peace? Here it is. Among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. He said by nature yeah. we were the children of wrath. By nature we were the children of wrath. Why? Because we were born into sin and shaped in iniquity by nature. By nature, we were the children of wrath. This is why we have peace with God when we accept Christ as our Savior because of what Christ did up on Calvary. He, come on, come on, let me get, let me go. And it, so the wrath of God is against sin. He said, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ. And then he said, by grace ye are saved. This is what we mean by having peace with God. For his grace, by his grace, what he did through Christ Jesus, his grace, it wasn't because we deserved it. Because he said, while well, we were dead in our sin, it said, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins 
had quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye have you are saved. Amen. Come on, I'm, let me go. I want to go somewhere else. Okay, what is the wrath of God against? Now we see it again. We see that the wrath of God is against sin. Now I want to go to Romans 1 and 18. No, take that back. We went to Romans 1 and 18. We want to go to Romans uh, 1 and 27. And it's in and Romans 27, all the way through, is talking about the sin of man. And every sin that you can think about, from Romans 27 all the way to 32, and this is what the wrath of God is against in ungodliness, and, and what he said, and the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against ungodliness and unrighteousness. And that's every man that walked this earth. Because the Bible said that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so now when we read 5, when we go to Romans 5, we can understand better what we're at peace, how we're at peace. Now we can understand now, he said, therefore, being justified by faith. Faith in what? Faith in Christ Jesus. Faith in Christ Jesus. So this is not, this word is not to somebody that don't believe in God. Okay? The atheists are the ones that say, hey, God ain't real. You know, I don't believe in all that stuff. Well, this is not to you anyway. This is, this is to the believer to understand and know how we're justified and how we're at peace with God. This is how we know this. Okay? This is how we know he said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we have peace with God? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through the finished work of the cross. Through that which God has done through his son, Jesus Christ. This is how we have peace with God. It's no offering that I can bring before. Well, I'm going to bring a peace offering. He don't want my peace offering. Well, I'm going to give a million. He don't want my. He just want me to trust that Christ has saved me through the. And, and the watching the regeneration through the blood that he shed upon Calvary. Just believe that my son did this for you. To redeem you. Believe that. And then guess what? You have peace with me. Simple. Just believe in what Christ did. Finish is the finished word. Because it is. It, it's, it's, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And it said, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace. Pay attention now. Unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And it said, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace, this free gift, this gift. Because it said that we're saved by grace through faith in Christ. It is a gift from God. It is a gift from God. It is a free gift from God. It, 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 it means that we didn't do anything to, to, re, to get it. It means we didn't have to achieve anything to get the reward. The reward was given of God as a free gift. It, it, God didn't look down and say, oh, man, it's so good, and man, is so kind, I'm just going to give my son to die for them. No, Jesus died for sin. Jesus died for ungodly. We got to continue to keep that in context to know and recognize that, 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 that we, man, brought all the sin, and God gave all the grace. Amen. And then we can't make nothing good about our flesh because flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom. We got to take these corruptible bodies and trade them in what? For a incorruptible body. Okay? These bodies have got to be put off. So we can't look at our flesh man and say that the flesh is, is good. Because it's not. This is what we got to... This is how we distinguish true Christianity and false doctrine. The false doctrine is going to tell you, well, there's something that you can do to make yourself better. That's right. It's, there's nothing you can do to make yourself better. You got to trust Christ. You got to trust God. 
has is already doing the sanctification process within you through Christ, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Because in, in our flesh dwelling no good thing. That's right. So we take the emphasis, true Christianity puts the emphasis on God and Jesus. Right. Holy Spirit. False teaching puts it on me, myself, and I, prosperity, and all these other different things that are passing away along with this world. See, you see the difference. Now, the peace that we will get the, by, by trusting uh, in Christ is that peace that we want the wrath of God is not upon us. Amen? Come on. By whom also we have access by faith. I believe it. I trust it. I walk in it. And I believe it by faith. I, might, I can't see it. I just trust God. I know it. By faith. I, by faith, I believe Christ died for my sin. By faith, I believe he was buried. By faith, I believe he was resurrected on the third day. By faith, I believe he ascended into heaven and sit on the right hand of God, the Father of mine. By faith, I, 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 I have a place in heaven according to what he said in his word. By faith, I walk in it from day to day, recognizing it's him that gives me life. It's recognizing it's him that makes me move. Recognizing it's him that keeps me afloat or whatever. I just got to understand it by faith. I just trust God by faith. By whom? Also, we have access by faith. By whom? By Christ. And that grace where, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. The glory of God, not of man. The glory of God. Man, you put so much emphasis on God and Jesus where well, we can't put emphasis on nothing else. Because if I'm believing and trusting by hope through Christ, then I'm recognized that we are complete in him. Amen. Here it is. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Know that tribulation work is patient. We glory in tribulation. We glory when we're going through because we're not going through it on our own. He said, I never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. Come on. And it said, and then, and then we, that's another teaching. That's another teaching. But I want us to look at this and listen to it. And it said, and patient experience and experience hope. And hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. It's, the Holy Ghost is given unto you. Regardless of what you've been taught, you need to read the scriptures and understand that nobody else uh, is more holier than you because they look a certain way or act a certain way. Because pay attention, when you were justified, you also sanctify, you, you being sanctified, and you also will feel a seal, the Holy Ghost of promise. That way, don't let nobody, if you, when you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit just like the next born again person. And the next born again person. Those that are trusting Christ by faith, you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't allow nobody to tell you, hey, no, you got to wait on it. No, you you will seal with the Holy Ghost of promise the moment you accepted Christ and believed you would leave him uh, by faith. The moment that you got saved, you were sealed with the Holy Ghost. Here it is. It's right there in the book. It's right here in the book. Let me go back, man. By whom also you have access by faith. You have access as a believer. You have access by faith. This grace, the free gift, wherein we stand. We stand in the free gift of grace right now. And then it said, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Rejoice in it. And then it said, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Glory when you're going through something. Just give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Father God, thank you for even going through this right now. I give you the praise, honor, and glory while I'm going through this. Why? Because you said you'd never leave me, nor would you ever forsake me. And I'm trusting you by faith that you are right there with me. Even while I'm going through this right now, it don't feel good, but I ain't worried about it. I'm you standing right here. I'm standing in you. Come on, what? Come on, here it is. But we glory in tribulation, knowing that the tribulation working patient. The tribulation is doing something. It's working patient. It's working patient. Guess what? It's working patient for the next trial. Ha! For the next trial. 
But see, when we give up and don't, oh, all right, now I'm trusting Christ because I'm, I'm he, come on, let me go. Mm -hmm. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. And hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Holy Ghost is given to you as the believer. Okay? The regenerate believer, the one that's been born again. And I, I'm trying to show you the difference in true Christianity. I'm, oh, man. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to show you the difference in true teaching and how to distinguish Christianity from false teaching. Now, the false teacher will tell you that you ain't going to never go through nothing. False teacher is going to tell you that your faith ain't strong enough. That's why you're going through what you're going through. That's false. The Bible just tells us right now that glory even while you're going through the tribulation. Just go. <sighs> and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. This is Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Huh? This is the Apostle Paul, one who just about wrote through the power of the Holy Ghost, through the inspiration of God, just about the whole New Testament. All the epistles just about. Thirteen books. Thirteen books, huh? Eight. And, and he's telling us the glory in your tribulation. Because I can remember even telling, hearing Jesus tell, uh, praying unto God about his disciples. He said, these who you're giving to me, he said, don't take them out of the world, but protect them from the world. Because they hated me, they're going to also hate them. Yes, See, the false teacher would tell you that oh, everybody going to love you. No, everybody ain't going to love you. Because you trust Christ. Matter of fact, they're going to come up against you. I'm not trying to scare nobody. I just want us to understand. Just as they came up against the apostles, just as they came up anybody that was preaching Jesus, they came up against them. They came so hard up against Jesus that they even crucified him. They stoned him. Sometimes Jesus would go and tell him that my father sent me to do his will. Man, they'd pick up stones and go to stone at him. Huh? And he would get away. Stephen. When Stephen told him that y'all kill the Savior, and Stephen was the first deacon of the church, they stoned him to death because he preached Jesus. So the Bible is telling us that we glory even in tribulation. The false teacher would tell you that you ain't going to never go through nothing. But we believe as believers that even though I'm going through something, I'm trusting God because he said that he'll never leave me, nor would he ever forsake me. My faith is strong because my faith is in Christ. Your faith is in Christ and not in flesh. Then you stand even your glory in the tribulation. Why? Because the Bible tells us that we too will have trials and tribulation. This is the true church. The true church. You're going to go through some changes. That don't mean God left you. That means you're standing in him. You trust in him. Jesus said, fear not. Just trust him. Just trust him. And it don't mean your faith ain't strong. When you're going through trials and you get a little weak, that's all right, because you still got a flesh body. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. When you lean upon the flesh, then yeah, you're falling. You're falling. But when you lean upon the spirit and stand in the spirit, then you're standing. And allowing the fire darts to come right past you and hit Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Here it is. Here it is. And hope make it not a shame because we, the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength and due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Okay? True teaching, true church will recognize that Christ died for the ungodly. False will say, we all got to try to do so good and then Christ will come and dwell in your heart. No, he won't. Because if you try to do good within yourself, that means it's self-righteous. That means it's pride. We got You got to understand and say, for when we were yet without strength, when we were yet without strength, when we were yet without strength, say, I got to become strengthless. <laughs> As a true believer, I got to become strengthless. Why? Because my strength ain't strong enough. This is true. This is a true church. 
This is the true gospel. This is the true word. Why? Because we're putting it all up on God. We put everything upon God and not trusted in flesh. We put it all upon God. Come on. Because he said it like this. He said, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's what the true church is going to preach. Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for sinners. He said it's not the, it's not the well or the righteous that need a physician. It says the sick that need the physician. And I stay up in the sick wall because I needed a physician. That's right. <laughs> Come on now, let's go. And then it said, for scarcely, it said, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet prevention for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. God loves us while we yet sinners. He loves us while we were yet sinners. He didn't wait for you to get it right. He didn't wait till you came before him and, and said, that I'm gonna try to do better, God. And then you just love me now. You came before him as a sinner. And we came before him as sinners. Yeah. And then Christ died for us. Christ died for sin. Christ didn't die for the good. He died for sin. Because ain't no good in man. Wait, let, let me back this thing up so we can recognize. Nobody walked this earth has ever been perfect but Jesus Christ. Amen. Period. Regardless of how, how how righteous you thought somebody was in your past life, they was not perfect. That's right. I had a lot of respect and got a lot of respect for my granddad, but I recognized that if uh, but, uh, outside of Christ, he wasn't perfect. I loved him, but I recognized outside of Christ, he wasn't perfect. You hear what I'm saying? Outside of Christ, he wasn't perfect. Why, Why do you say that? God requires perfection. He don't, he don't, he can't take almost there. He can't take halfway there. He can't take 99.9. .9. This is true. This is, this is what you, how you going to distinguish the true church from the false church or the one that's set up on pride or self-righteousness. Where we, we are this and we that know. I got to say God is it. <laughs> Christ is it. He's perfect. He's perfect. And the only way God can see me perfected is that he sees Christ in me. He sees his blood on me. That's right. If he sees me without Christ's blood, I'm just a filthy rag in his sight. This is true church. This is true. This is, the, this is what the believer is to know. So if I stand before you and want to just make you feel good, you are this and you are that and you are this. I can't, and if I don't tell you this in Christ, then I'm just telling you a lie. Right. This is how the false teachers are so rich. And I ain't putting nothing against nobody because they tell people what they want to hear. And people dump their wallets out to them because they make me feel good. And when you get home that evening, what did the preacher preach about? Oh, he told me I was so good. And I just was, oh, I'm, not, I'm this and I'm that. But he, he didn't say nothing about Jesus. Didn't say nothing about the righteousness of God. Ha! Didn't say nothing about Christ crucified. Didn't say nothing about the blood of Jesus. It starts at the cross. It starts at the cross. This is true teaching. This is the church. This is how you distinguish fake from real. If you make it all about me and all about the world and all about finances and riches and all that, if you make your whole makeup and your life about that and forget about the cross of Christ, then it's false. It's falsehood. It's all about God. It's all about his sovereignty. It's all about his love. It's all about his grace. It says set your affections on things that are above and not upon the things on this earth. He even said those who were preached as such, their bellies are, uh, uh, God is their belly. God, the world or whatever is their belly. In other words, they, they, they feed their belly off of the gospel, the false gospel. Their God is their belly. That means whatever I'll preach to make you feel good, I usually bring me more money. 
And whatever you want to hear, I tell you all day. Just buy me another boat. Buy me another. <laughs> buy me another airplane. I I preach to you all. Oh, you be so happy. You be running up and down. Oh yeah, hey! And I be telling man, go and get that money because I know they dumping it because I'm making them feel good about themselves. When I ought to be, you ought to be giving. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All praises to my God. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then you're able to give him praise and honor in all things. And then when we take the emphasis off ourselves and allow God to truly work within us through Christ, then you can truly understand the blessedness that is in being saved from sin and being saved from the wrath to come. Oh, man. It, ooh. The Bible said that they trained the truth of God into a lie. And they worship the creature more than the creator. That's what the Bible said. They trained the truth of God into a lie. And they worship the creature more than the creator. And when we begin to worship the creature more than the creator, the whole word of God is turned into a lie. Amen? And we're going to get into that more in our next uh, teaching. But I'm, well, let us go on, let us go on. He said, but God committed the love to us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified. Now we're justified by his blood. When you somebody say, how are you justified? As, a, as true Christianity, I'm justified by Christ's blood. I, much more than being now justified by his blood, my justification came from the blood of Jesus Christ. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Jesus was already slain before the foundation of the world. It wasn't that I gave, I paid uh, uh, my money every week. It wasn't that I went to church every Sunday. It wasn't that I went to Sunday school and said all these different things. It wasn't that I said my Easter speech every Sunday since I was two years old. That ain't saved me. It, it didn't save me. It did not save me. And when we're able to recognize and put everything in its perspective, perspective place and put it all back up on the blood of Jesus Christ, then you'll be able to see everything else around you that's error. And when you're able to see error, then you'll be ready for correction through the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is, uh, is, a, he, he is, he is our correction. He will correct us. When we take our eyes off of self and begin to look at the cross and begin to trust God, then he can show us our error through the power of the Holy Ghost. He would enlighten us. He would illuminate the scriptures through to us if we take our minds off of self and put it on him. Too often time we put more emphasis on ourselves and we don't put our emphasis on God with him leading us. Uh, 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 lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. When we acknowledge him, he will direct our path and however it is that he wants to direct us. But why? Because we're leaning not to our own understanding, but we trust in his word now. Amen. Through the wow, through the power of the Holy Ghost. The only way you can understand his word is through the power of the Holy Ghost. And you as a believer, if you've been saved, you have the Holy Spirit in you and you're able to, the scriptures are able to be illuminated to you through the spirit man now. And I don't have to just believe anything anybody say. I can just pray. Lord, just open my eyes right now through the power of the Holy Ghost that I may receive this, what you have given me through your scripture. Because all the revelation is already in the book. It's in the book. I don't know where he'll take you in it, but it's in the book. Come on, come on. It said much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved. Here you go again, y'all. We shall be saved. We shall be saved. Man, I don't know what them people always talk about they say. Much more than being now just so they need to open up the book and read Romans and read it all the way through. And it's the it's the gospel, it's the sanctification, it's justification, it's all in the book of Romans. Come on, come on. It said much more than being now justified by his blood. By being justified by his blood, this is the true church. This is what truth is, okay? Now as a believer, much more than being now justified by his blood, 
How are you justified, believer? I'm justified by Jesus Christ's blood. I, I, well, I, you, I, you did this and you did. I ain't justified by what I do. I'm justified by Jesus' blood. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. That's a whole nother sermon. That's a whole nother teaching. The wrath of God is against unrighteousness and ungodliness. Every sin that man can think of, the wrath of God is against it. Christ's blood has washed away the sins for those that will come and trust and believe him by faith. This is what the Bible teaches us. We're saved from the wrath. We read it in 2 Thessalonians. We read it in Romans 1. The wrath to come. God laid all his wrath upon Christ. He laid his, all his wrath upon Christ. Christ did not sin. Christ was sinless. He laid the sins of man. Christ died as a substitution for the sin. He didn't know no sin. He took our sin. When it said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It meant that who would ever come and trust Christ for salvation, that blood was shed for that reason. So if anybody told you that, man, I got myself together and I went and joined church because I got myself together and then I got saved and he told you a lie because you couldn't get yourself together. You had to come to Christ as broken. Sinful, not knowing the way, giving up on yourself, period. Pride, everything. Most of the time, people won't come to the cross because of pride. And oftentimes, people go, oh, hallelujah, he used to be a drunkard. Now he came to Jesus. Now he just came to his end. It wasn't about him being drunk. <laughs> he just came to his end. He realized that he couldn't make it. <laughs> they, uh, we, uh, we need to quit doing that to people Oh he used to be a drunk So what? so what He came to his end And he trusted Christ for salvation Well what about the person that won't come To the end and trust it in themselves What about that person that's prideful And when you see him they're humble Oh he was so prideful and now he's humble Guess what he came to his end He stopped trusting in himself And he began oh hallelujah He, he, he said I, I, I just give up on my old ratchet behind self Pride will keep a person from coming to the cross. Pride got the devil kicked out of heaven. That's it. He wanted to be like the most high God. And he got kicked out of heaven. Arrogance. An arrogant person can't be saved until they come to their ends. We put more emphasis on what people we see people do. And, 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 and uh, that's evil and that's wrong and that. What about pride? What about arrogance? You talk self-respect. That's okay. But you got to come to your ends before you can come before God. God is not a respecter of person. God hates pride. He hates the proud. He said, humble yourself before the Lord thy God. There's no room for arrogance in Christianity. There's no room for pride in Christianity. And I know we've been taught differently all these years. But why? Because we were taught by a prideful person. That's right. They had more pride in itself than in the living God. Amen. They began to trust flesh more than they were trusting God. Amen. Jesus said, not my will be done, but thou will be done. Amen. This is the attitude of a true believer. This is the attitude of a true church. It's not our will be done, but it's God's will be done. It's not about me, it's about Christ. I didn't save myself, but Jesus saved me. And I thank God that he saved me. This is true church. It wasn't a popular message then, and it's not a popular message now. But as a true believer, we got to understand that we got to stand on the word of God if we want to see souls saved. We are called 
to preach the gospel. Go ye therefore. Ha! We are called to go ye therefore. This is why the teaching is very important. To when you go ye therefore, you're not trampling all over people like we more than that. But by grace, we are what we are. By grace, I am what I am. But by grace, there go I. Amen. See, we got to put ourselves in that. Oh, it ain't popular. I ain't trying to be popular. I'm just trying to preach the truth. And as believers, we want to recognize before we stepping all over people that true Christianity don't do that. Jesus didn't step on people. He fussed at them church folk that were faking. That's who Jesus uh, felt that. He called them vipers. Mm -hmm. Called them evil. Because they were taken from the people when they should have been given to the people. They were telling them, don't do as I do, do as I say. And they were doing everything under the sun that they could do. And Jesus come at them too. He ran them, just ran the sheep and ran them all out of the temple for, to, for, for making his father's house a den of thieves. This is true Christianity. When we're making the house of God a den of thieves, then that's false teaching. Jesus ran them out because of that. Because they were making it more about making money. Oh yeah, come on, we're going to sell you this old dove for a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. They were overcharging for the doves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They were money, they were changing the money during the Pentecost and you know, during our Passover. They were giving they was changing the money, but they were charging them more money than they should have been charging. They still doing that now. Now they're selling books and CDs. Now they're selling books and CDs to make money. Instead of just giving you a good book. <laughs> and you properly you agree to read the gospel and be saved, give me twenty dollars for this book. Making money. So we got to really understand that, you know, to understand the truth about this. What we, this is what we're teaching is that we can recognize true and false. And, 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 and I ain't, and then to, to God be the glory because I know everything that anybody do that, you know, they're going to have to be held accountable for it. But to, but to stand before people and say that Jesus did this and Jesus did that and then say, well, I can really bless you if you send me $35. Well, if I can really bless you, then I can really bless you for free. Amen. <laughs> uh, you're going to be blessed if you keep your $35 and buy you some milk and cereal and some bread for the week. And then I just bless, I might send you $35. Huh? How about if I do that? How about I want to bless you with a word and then I'm going to send you $35 to go buy whatever you want with it. Now that's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Hey, See, that's true. That's, that's, that's true. Gospel. I'm going to tell you the truth and then I'm going to help you get the truth. Amen. I'm going to send you $35 where you can go and buy you some food. While you reading your spiritual word, you can get you some physical food while you eat. Mm -hmm. To go up be the glory. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. I, I got to get out of here. I, I got to get out of here. I know that ain't popular, but I ain't trying to win no popularity contest. I ain't winning in school the most popular person. <laughs> you know how they had that in the end of the year, the most popular person. I didn't have it. I ain't trying to be popular. I try to preach the truth Amen. that souls be saved. And not only that souls be saved, that those that are saved can walk in truth. That we walk in truth. And so we can quit believing a lie and quit, quit following falsehood and believe upon the truth. And it hurt. But why? It, it hurts so much because some of the stuff we've been taught all our lives and we think it's true, but it's false. Anytime it's looking at man and giving man all the praise, honor, and glory, and ain't lifting up our Father in heaven and, our, and his Son, Jesus Christ, then it ain't, it ain't, no, man. We don't lift up no buildings. We don't praise no buildings. We don't praise no man. We give God the praise, honor, and the glory, always. We thank God for having a place to come and fellowship and worship, but we don't praise this place. It's just somewhere to come, to worship and praise them together as believers. But we don't, oh, don't do this and don't do that. Man, come on, let's go. Come on, it is. For if we, when we were enemies, now look, if we, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. We were reconciled back to God by the death of Jesus Christ. This is what the true gospel tells us. The true gospel tells us that you hear me say it all the time, that, that Christ died for the ungodly, Christ died for sinners, that his blood saved us from the wrath to come, this is true Christianity. We'll reconcile to God by the death of his son, Jesus, not because 
who you are, where you went to school at, where your parents went to school at, how much money you got, uh, because you went to a certain church. There's no other church other than the church that Christ is coming back for. There's no other church better than no other church. Christ said, I'm coming back for my church without spot or wrinkle. And if anything within that church that ain't like God, then guess what? He don't want that. If, they, if anything on that church is self-centered and it's about that building, about that person, about one person, then God ain't pleased with that. And if you're worshiping and praising a building or a man more than you are God, he ain't pleased with that. He's not coming back for that. He wants you to praise him and him alone. He wants you to give him the praise, the honor, and the glory, and him alone. He wants you to believe that Christ has fitted, paid the full price for everything. That's what he wants you to believe. And he said, he said that for if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved. There it is again. Oh, why are people saying they don't know what saved mean? <laughs> it said right there that we shall be saved by his life. It there go again, saved. It's in the book. People will run over the book of, of Romans because they don't want to hear the truth. They'll preach on every, they'll preach everything in the Old Testament that was to Israel, and you're not an Israelite. You're a Gentile. You're a non-Jew. But everything is in there. It was about Israel. And it was about and, and, and then, then we 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 were adopted into the family through Jesus. We were adopted. We adopted children through Jesus. But we got the same inheritance. That's right. We got the same inheritance that the Jews got through Jesus. Through Jesus. See? We are sons of God through Jesus as believers. Don't, don't get it. Don't get it messed up now. Through Jesus. Not through self-righteous. Not through all ordinance. Not through Laws, not through rituals. Rituals will hurt you. When you go to doing rituals and thinking that it's going to save you, and you think that's how you get your salvation, rituals will hurt you. Especially when you think you're saved from doing rituals. You ain't saved. Well, how do you say that, Pastor? Because the Bible just said, for if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we should be saved by his life. We saved by what Jesus Christ did upon Calvary. That's how we saved. You can do all the rituals, throw all the salt over your shoulder, kick the dust off your feet and all that. That don't save you. This is true Christianity. We saved by grace through faith in what Christ did upon Calvary. That's the true church. That's the one that he's coming back for. Not the one that put all the stuff in rituals. Rituals do not save you. Now, if you want to do some rituals, don't say they're unto God. And that's what saved you. Okay? Don't, don't say that's what saved you. You can remember him through our, our ceremony when we have communion. It's what he said, do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. He didn't say do this and it's going to save you. When you get baptized, he didn't say get baptized and it's going to save you. That's how we know each other as believers. That's our. That's what we do to be. Uh, uh, what you say? Identified. identified as a believer in what Christ did up on Calvary's cross. I got baptized because I believe I was saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. I believe He died for my sin. I believe He took away all my sin. And I got baptized. Now I'm identified as a Christian, a believer in Jesus Christ. But it ain't nothing that I did. It's by grace. It's by grace. Okay, and it said in reconcile, we have been saved by his life. We saved by his life. And it said not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. He atoned for our sin. Okay, and that said, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so Death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Understand this. All we had in Adam is sin. Everything that we put on Adam is sin. The first Adam put us in sin. 
So when we go to teach it about Adam, we read to recognize that Adam put us in scenes. We can't leave that out. We can't, I can't tell you a story about Adam without telling you that we were led into sin through Adam. That's his story. That's his story. And I thank God for Adam. I, mean, I thank God for Adam. Because if it wasn't for the first Adam, we wouldn't have the second Adam. Amen. Come on, this is this is what this, this is the truth. Because I can tell you, Eve ate an apple and all that. What I need to tell you about salvation. I need to tell you because of what Adam and Eve did in that garden allowed the, the, the one that was slain before the foundation of the world, it allowed all that to bam come into place. It put it all in line. He fell in the garden. God knew he would fall in the garden. God knew that already. Why? Because Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. Before he breathed life into Adam, he knew that man would fall. That's right. Because the Bible said that, 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 that this is the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. He was slain before the foundation of the world. This is why we need to understand and don't be trying to put yourself, I'm a little God and he's a big God. Now you need to put yourself that I'm a sinner and he's, oh, he's the savior. Amen. This is true Christianity. I know I can say some stuff that make you feel good, but is it going to save your soul? I don't want nobody to feel good. I want people saved. If I want somebody to feel good, I can tell them about Little Red Robin Hood or the Three Little Pigs. But I'm going to tell them about Jesus, the one that saves. One that saves. I don't want to tell a kid about Santa Claus and the Easter but I want to tell them about Jesus. Christ has died for their sin. We need to quit lying. We need to tell the truth about the one that came and laid down his life that man can be saved. That man can have salvation. We need to quit lying on God. This is true Christianity. And when, oh, that ain't that bad. When if somebody lie to you about something important, you can say, that ain't that bad, but you're mad as fire. I need to tell you that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I need to tell you that the only way that you can be saved is you come before Christ and trust him. And you, you, oh, it ain't going to hurt that bad. Yes, it will hurt that bad. Somebody can be saved if we tell the truth about Jesus. This is what true Christianity is about. It's about Jesus. Amen. It's about the cross of Christ. It's about the blood of Jesus that'll take away the sins of the world. This is what Christianity is about. It ain't about us. It's about Jesus. It's about our Father in heaven being glorified. Amen. It's about the truth of God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's about God. True Christianity ain't about making you feel good. True Christianity is making you understand that we're, we're, we're lost sinners without Jesus Christ. He is the Savior. He is our strength like no other. This is the difference in fake news and real news. <laughs> Jesus is the good news. <laughs> he is the good news. The gospel. While we were yet in sin, he died for the ungodly. This is the message to preach that souls be saved. Souls can't be saved. I'm just telling them they're going to uh, 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 name it and claim it and shame it and lame it and all that. What what good is a man to, to what powerful man to gain the world and lose his salvation? Get all the world and then go straight to hell. That ain't no good news. This is why we need to understand what's true and what's fake. True and fake. Okay? Me and my wife was at the flea market the other day and we recognize we looking at all this stuff. They got these name brands on stuff, but we recognize that stuff fake. But well, we might just buy it just to have it, but it's fake. We know it ain't the real thing. But when you basing your salvation upon something that you do or I do or the pastor did or somebody laid hands on you and then you got saved and you didn't come before and believe Christ as your savior, then guess what? That's fake. This is why as believers we need to understand what it means, what true Christianity is. Why? Because we're ambassadors. And we got to be ambassadors of this word to get the true word out. 
that others be saved. And we go falsifying information, then that person gonna fall again because he trusted in himself. And when he realized he couldn't do it, then guess what? He's gonna go right back out into the world. And then, man, I don't believe them trade folk because I couldn't make it because I thought it, because, well, you thought it was about you and you thought you can do it on your own, but it ain't, you can't. It's in Christ. This is why we need to know to have a foundation. So we need to know when we when we reach out to others with the gospel, we need to just preach Jesus. We need to preach Christ crucified, just like Paul said. I preached nothing but Christ. He said, Christ didn't send me to baptize, but he sent me to preach the gospel. And that's what we do. And then when we're preaching the gospel, as they come in, then guess what? We'll, we'll disciple them. And guess what they'll do? They'll go out and preach the gospel too. Or share and witness the gospel. Amen? And the sanctification process is a lifelong process. But they be justified. When people realize they're justified through what Christ did upon the cross, then they won't keep trying to justify themselves by what they do. They'll be trusting Christ and Christ alone. Because every time we try to justify ourselves by what we do, we're going to fall short every time. Because we trust in the flesh. And you can't, you, you're not justified by your flesh. You're justified by the blood of Jesus. And I know I had a lot more in that, but that's okay. I thank God for tonight. I pray that something was said through the power of the Holy Ghost that will help us as we look at true, how to distinguish true Christianity from false doctrine. This is what we're trying to, this is what we're trying to separate. We're trying to separate the real from the fake. Okay. And we recognize we're not, not like the scriptures say, let the wheat and the tares come up together and then he'll separate them in the end. That ain't what we're talking about. We're talking about false doctrine, false teachers, something that is very real. And what the falseness, the falsehood wants you to do is take your eye off Jesus. That's the real agenda for the false teaching is to take your eye off the cross of Christ and start believing in your flesh and believing in material and believing in anything else other than the cross of Christ. It is said they are enemies of the cross. They're enemies of the cross, okay? And we say, and the Bible said, uh, 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 to those that are perishing, the cross is foolish. But it said to us that are saved, it is the power of God. And that's what I want to leave you with tonight. To those that are saved, it's the power of God. But I also want to leave somebody with this tonight, that right now you have the opportunity right now to be saved. If you will come right now, not trusting in yourself, not trusting in things that are around you, but just come tonight and trust Christ for salvation. Believe that he died for your sin. Trust that he died for your sin. If you trust him, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing right now, just come before him right now as a sinner. Recognize that you're a sinner. Recognize that you're ungodly. Recognize that we fall short of his glory. Recognize that it's not because of us that we're saved, but it's because of what he did up on Calvary. Amen. And guess what he would do? He would come right now through the power of the Holy Ghost and dwell within you. And guess what? You'll be sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. And then you walk in him. And guess what? Day by day, the sanctum, you justify once you receive him as your savior. The sanctification process is a lifelong process. Amen. Trust in him and walking in him. And we bless God. I pray that somebody today was saved. I pray that somebody heard, God, God, uh, as Paul said it, that you heard the same thing that I heard. That Christ died for your sin according to the scripture. That he will bear it for your sin according to the scripture. And then on the third day, he arose from the dead according to the scripture. If you believe that, if you believe that Christ has taken away your sin, and the Bible also said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will come and believe upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible also said that, 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 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But it, the Bible said that, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Hold up through Christ Jesus. So if you come and believe upon him tonight, you'll promise to have everlasting life. If it be one, if it be one, the angels in heaven rejoice. And I pray that the believers were edified and strengthened in the word that tonight that Holy Spirit illuminated your eyes to something within the scripture to recognize how we have peace with God. Recognize what the wrath is against. This is true teaching. 
recognizing how you were saved, who saved you, and how the, the blood of Christ has taken away the sins of the world for those that will come and trust him for salvation. I pray that something was said tonight that would just edify the believer to be strengthened, to want to share share uh, Christ with somebody that they be saved. So I, I pray that if it, in any other way that that you that somebody told you that you had to come back three days, you had to go to a class to be saved, and after you get through with your class, you're going to graduate and you be saved, we need to repent from that and turn and come and be saved the right way, trusting, trusting God for salvation, believing that Christ has washed away all your sin. And you ain't got to go back talking about uh, trying to put Christ back in the grave and bring him up every time that you sin. Because all that sin and falling short of the glory of God. The flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. There's no man walking this earth perfect. But Christ perfect in us. Holy Ghost is able to keep us. The flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. We're kept through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I want to get the understanding and the teaching out. Don't want to win no popularity contest. I'm not trying to be on the the, the uh I'm not trying to be on the page, on the front page of GQ. I ain't trying to do all that. I live a calm and simple life. I want to preach the gospel, preach the gospel to all mankind all over the world. Uh, uh, I just want to get the gospel message out that people be saved. I've been called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not called to tell you about how many houses you're going to have, how many cars you're going to have. If you got one house, be grateful for that. If you got one car, be grateful for that because there's some people that don't have nowhere to stay. There's some people that don't have a vehicle at all. So just be grateful and thankful for what you have. I'm not called to be that kind of preacher. I preach the gospel. I got the good news that you can be saved and have everlasting life, eternal life through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He can save you to the uttermost. He's able. That blood of Christ is able. So I just thank God for you guys tonight. I bless God for you through the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray that all is well. I pray that you continue to trust Christ. I pray that you allow Christ to dwell in your heart by faith. I pray that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. I pray that you continue to share the good news. Christ has died for our sin. And he has given us life and given it to us everlasting. And we bless God for you guys. And I say good night. I love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity once again to share your word. Father God, we pray that your word will come into our hearts tonight and dwell by faith, oh God, through Christ Jesus. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, Lord God, that we may be able to reach others uh, uh, for your name's sake. Father God, we lift you up right now in the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you right now. We give you praise, honor, and glory right now. And Father, we ask that you continue to guide our feet, Lord God, in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Father God, we ask that you continue to show us the way and give us an open door, Lord God, to reach as many as, as, as you would have us to reach with your gospel message. Father God, we thank you for the fathers of the gospel that you allowed us to work in your vineyard. Father God, we ask that you continue to give us strength to continue to plow, to plow, to plow in your garden, Lord God, that we continue to, to water and, and, and plant and that, Lord God, we recognize that you will give the increase. Father God, we thank you for the labors that you have given us already, and we ask that you continue to send us more laborers that are ready, Father God, to work in the vineyards, oh God, to father us the gospel. Father God, we thank you for your the blood that Christ shed up on Calvary. We thank you for saving us, Lord God, while we were yet in sin. We thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord God, for your everlasting love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we say amen. And we give you the praise, honor, and the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. 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 Good, e good evening, everybody. God bless you and have a good one.